How's it going guys? Today I'm gonna to show you exactly what it's like to drive the all new BMW iX electric SUV from a first person point of view. I'm also gonna talk about five insane features of the car you haven't seen on any other vehicle. The iX makes 516 horsepower and 564 pound feet of torque, and it's capable of sprinting from zero to 60 miles an hour in just 4.4 seconds. While the looks are a bit controversial, the front grille has a really, really cool feature. It actually has a thin layer of polyurethane that is a self-healing film. So if you get rock chips or scratches in the front grille area, it'll actually heal itself over the course of 24 hours at room temperature. Now, if you use a heat gun, it'll heal itself within five minutes. How crazy is that? Now, moving on to the next insane feature, because the hood itself doesn't open, I'm not quite sure why BMW chose to do that. It would be nice if we had a front trunk, but all of the cooling and electronic elements are there. Uh, there's no place for the windshield wiper reservoir for the fluid, but uh, actually they've integrated it right here in the BMW logo. If we click this, it pops open to reveal where you put your windshield washer fluid. That is pretty crazy. If you look at the side of the iX, you'll notice a couple things. For one, the wheels are absolutely enormous. That's because these are the optional 22 inch wheels. You'll also notice there are no door handles. It's just a little slot here, which I actually love how it's integrated with an electronic release. We'll go ahead and open the door to reveal an absolutely stunning interior. More on the interior in a little bit. Hopping around to the rear of the iX, I actually like the way the rear of the car looks. It's nice and sleek, really thin taillights. If we go ahead and pop open the trunk, it reveals a generous amount of space that can be expanded by clicking these buttons here to drop those seats down. Now, funny enough, if you back up, the rear of the car actually looks like a Cullinan with these safety lights. They're actually pretty much the exact same shape of the Cullinan taillights. Pretty wild. All right, let's hop inside. The next insane feature has to do with the interior, more specifically, this massive panoramic sunroof. Traditionally, with sunroofs, you've got a shade that goes and blocks the sun or gives you extra privacy. This, there is none. So what happens? Well, it uses something called electric chromic technology. It's actually got a thin layer inside the glass itself that has these liquid crystals in it. When there's an electric current flowing through, the liquid crystals actually line up perfectly, allowing light to shine through. See how we can see those trees there? When the electric current goes away, the crystals scatter and you can't see through. So if we click this button right here, check out what happens to the trees. Bye-bye. That is crazy. Now, moving on to the next insane feature it has to be these crystallized interior buttons. These are the seat controls. They just look so high quality and premium. We've also got some massage functionality as well we go into the display here. We also have crystallized controls for the multimedia system for iDrive 8, as well as the volume controls, the start stop button, and the shifter. I absolutely love what they did with the crystallized controls. It has caused some glare one or two times, but for the most part, they did a good job of it not blinding you in the face. Now, the last insane feature has to be a combination of this epic display. I mean, the graphics are fantastic. It's also fully customizable as well. Check this out. If we go into the controls here, we can actually change what content is being displayed on the screen. And if we click my modes and go back to personal, we can also change the layout for what is displayed. That is pretty cool. But that's not actually the insane feature I'm talking about. If we go into sound settings here, let's go to media, then sound. This car has the optional Bowers and Wilkins sound system. It's got 1600 watts and 30 speakers throughout the cabin. The fit and finish is phenomenal, but it's got a 4D surround system whereby there's a speaker inside the seat itself and a magnetically controlled shaker where when the subwoofer goes off and the bass is booming, the seat actually vibrates and resonates your body like you're in a club with a million dollar sound system. It is actually insane and I love it. 4D base experience, synchronize all. I mean, <laughs> how do they think of these things? Absolutely ridiculous. All right, guys, let's actually take this iX out for a spin. Turning on the iX is very simple. Just put your foot on the brake, click the start stop button right here, and it makes this really cool futuristic noise as it starts up. Now I've changed the layout of the display. I actually don't really like that that much. So we'll go ahead to settings 
and then change it back to, I think I like that one. Nice. Now to put the car into reverse, take this little crystallized lever and push it backwards. We've got a really nice backup camera and surround view, aerial view, check this out. We even have the ability to see the sides of the car while you're actually driving, which is pretty crazy. There are so many different options for the cameras, it's insane, a car wash view. That's pretty cool, so you don't scrape your wheels when you're going into a car wash. Let's go to parking view. Wow, this is awesome. Now, we have rear axle steering in the car, which makes maneuvering in tight spaces so, so easy. I mean, it literally has the turning radius of uh, something like a Mini Cooper or a Fiat 500, not a massive BMW X5 sized SUV. Go ahead and put it back into drive here. This was a really tight area, uh, but normally it's able to do crazy U-turns uh, in places that I, I didn't think were possible, legitimately. All right, let's go ahead and flip around here. And off we go. Zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. This vehicle does feel fast. With the instant torque from the electric motors, it kicks you in the back with an immediate surge of power. Now there's multiple driving modes to choose from. If we go over to my modes right here, we can switch into sport mode to give it a little sportier ride and faster throttle response. The steering is still very loose uh, and there is not a lot of communication. Honestly, it's an incredible daily driver. It's so easy and relaxing to drive. The visibility is phenomenal, but a sporty car in the canyons, it is not. But honestly, it wasn't ever trying to be that. Now, if I pull back on this lever again, watch the screen shift from D to B. B, I believe, stands for braking, but it activates the regenerative braking. I'm not clicking the brakes at all, and look, it's basically coming to a complete stop. So you can do full one-pedal driving, pretty much, unless you need to do an emergency stop. But the good news is, with the driver assistance features on the iX, even if you don't have adaptive cruise control on and there's a car in front of you, it will slow itself down really smoothly, actually, uh, instead of just slamming on the brakes at the last second. Now, speaking of assisted driving, we're gonna go ahead and put it back into uh, the normal driving mode. If you go ahead and set the cruise control, you can actually get the assisted driving to activate and basically give you a form of Tesla's autopilot where it can steer itself in the lane, speed the car up, slow itself down, etc., etc. Now we've got a brilliant heads up display, one of the best in the business that I have ever seen. Perfect mix of size, clarity, amount of information, particularly when you're doing navigation. Uh, it has this really, really cool feature on the screen here that works in conjunction with the heads up display. It'll actually show you uh, augmented reality arrows on the display itself showing you and guiding you where to go. I'll have to show you that in a little bit, but it is way too cool. The brakes are pretty good, nice progressive feel to them. They're not super grabby or jerky. The suspension is phenomenal in this car. It's got air suspension, it rides over bumps so very well. A lot of electric cars are a bit bouncy and jerky and all over the place over bumps, but this feels like a true luxury car. It's also absolutely silent in here. There's no uh, artificial, loud, electronic noise when you accelerate like in the Mercedes EQS or uh, Porsche Taycan Turbo S. It's just purely silent, and the isolation from the outside environment in the iX is truly unbelievable. I love this center display, 12-inch unit for the instrument cluster and a 15 inch unit, nice rock in the road there, for the multimedia system. It is BMW's iDrive 8 and the levels of customizability and the amount of apps that they have in the iDrive 8 is insane. And the graphics are as well. You'll notice easy access for the climate controls right here. But if you need more information, click the climate menu and then check out how many options we have here. I mean, it's actually limitless. It's pretty ridiculous. Go ahead and hit the home button. We'll go to menu and look how many apps I have. I mean, it's almost overwhelming, but apparently you can get used to it after a while and it's really great. I mean, look, your iPhone or your Android has a bunch of apps and nobody's complaining about that being confusing. So I really do like this layout. They've made such a massive improvement over previous generation BMWs. Finally, they've got something that can rival Mercedes interiors. Uh, and I mean that in the best way possible. The steering wheel is a bit oddly shaped. It's hexagonal in nature. 
BMW claims that it gives you more visibility of the instrument cluster, and I believe them, but it also is a little bit awkward, uh, in my opinion, in terms of grabbing it, particularly for sportier driving. I like to put my hands at nine and three, and typically on a round steering wheel, it's somewhat straight up and down at that point to grab it. This though goes from curved outwards, where you're like curling dumbbells, to curved inwards. There's no actual flat spot on the wheel whatsoever, and it's kind of awkward figuring out where to put your hands. The wheel itself is super high quality. Love the buttons on the wheel. We've got layout controls uh, for different content here, which I've already described. I will say that the turning indicators are really cheap plastic. Like, they feel really bad for a $100,000 car. This iX as spec will set you back $100,000, which is a lot of money. But you have an incredible interior that's unbelievably comfortable. It's got a 4D surround sound experience, electrochromic roof, 516 horsepower. And if that's not enough, there is an up and coming M60 version with 610 horsepower and 811 pound feet of torque. That is pretty crazy. All right, let's pull up the navigation really quick. And let's type in, let's do a charging station, shall we? Where is the nearest one? All right, EV charging station. Start guidance. Look at that. It's showing an arrow pointed left and a series of arrows that are lighting up one at a time, letting me know that I should go left right now on this road. That is insane. Now, I actually have to go to the right, but uh, let's see what happens now. Does it have some sort of U-turn indication? Oh, look at that. Yes, it does. I mean, this is literally like playing a video game. I've seen something like that in... Gran Turismo or at an arcade. <laughs> just un freaking believable. I really like how easy it is to cancel the navigation too. In general, it's kind of complicated with most systems to turn it off, but this, you've got a flag with a little X, which makes a ton of sense. Click that and the route guidance is done. Floor it again. <laughs> it really is pretty quick. Let's go ahead and activate the partial self-driving. Click this button here. All right, assisted driving mode. All right, we are good to go. It should steer itself in the lanes or get me into a head-on collision. There's two options here. Look at that. It's working. Oh, <laughs> that is freaking awesome. Flashing at me to tell me to put my hands back on the wheel, give it a little adjustment there. And once again, it is steering me around the corners with ease. That is awesome. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the BMW iX review. If you've just seen this point of view drive review, I did a more in-depth review uh, in a video I'll link in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video.